Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. And I conduct independent grow light tests as part of our comprehensive grow light guide. Today I'm testing the Vipar Spectra XS4000. The Vipar Spectra XS series have top-end components with Samsung LM301B diodes and Meanwell drivers. The XS4000 is a large quantum board style grow light that draws about 500 watts. I'll start with the traditional PAR test in the 5x3 space it's designed for. I'll also run an extended PAR test with the new Apogee SQ610 ePAR sensor to measure the far red light. And since 5x3 grow spaces are not too common, I'll also test it in a 4x4 space. It has pretty impressive results, and the cost efficiency is crazy good. They offer the best deals on Amazon, and our discount code will combine with other sales. This one's going to be free. I'm doing a PAR test premiere giveaway. If you're watching during the live premiere, guess the three-digit winning number and put it in the chat. If you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can be part of the next one. The Vipar Spectra XS4000 arrived in a large, plain box. I'll open it up, take out the cardboard and the styrofoam padding, and there it is. This is twice as large as the smaller XS2000 fixture. It looks like two of them put together. All of the XS series fixtures have Samsung LM301B diodes, which are considered the best. Thick aluminum heat sinks, which are ribbed on the top, and top-end Meanwell drivers. We'll take a closer look in a second. There's not much else in the box. A little user manual and satisfaction card, and then this box, which is a fancy way to pack up the hanging kid, and the ratchet pulleys. The Vipar Spectra XS4000 features a total of 1,152 diodes, which is 2.4 diodes per watt. There are 768 3000 k and 320 5000 k full-spectrum Samsung LM301B diodes. Spaced between them are 60 660 nanometer red and four 730 nanometer far red EpiLEDs diodes. On the other side, the XS4000 features two high-efficiency Meanwell drivers. Down on this end, there's a dimmer knob that controls both of them. The XS4000 is long and relatively skinny for a quantum board. It's almost 4 feet long, but only 11 inches wide. I'm curious about how well the light will be distributed in the PAR maps. As we saw, they provide hanging cables and two ratchet pulleys. But I use four ratchet pulleys for my PAR tests. There's no assembly required. There aren't even any plugs to attach. Just hang it up, plug it in, and turn it on. Let's check out the diodes. You can see the two different color temperatures of the full spectrum diodes, and the intermittent glow from the red diodes. The few diodes that appear very dim are the 730 nanometer far red, which is right at the edge of the visible spectrum. We'll look closer at far red light in the tests, but I have to let the diodes warm up and stabilize first. Normally, I'd go to the manufacturer website to see the published stats, but Vipar Spectra sells primarily through Amazon, and I don't have permission to record Amazon pages. So let's head straight to the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. It focuses on the important metrics and allows you to make better comparisons. In the calculator on the right, I load all the fixtures that I test. As you can see, I've already tested the XS1000, the XS1500, and the XS2000. Let's look at this data. The XS2000 had a power draw of 232 watts and delivered 454.9 micromoles of usable light to the canopy, which is a usable photon efficiency of 1.96 micromoles per watt. For the XS4000, I can use the calculator on the left. The listed power draw is 480 watts. We have discount codes for Vipar Spectra. For the XS series, Use discount code Dr. MJ Coco XS during checkout on Amazon. Right now there's a sale, and our discount code combines with other sales. With both discounts, the cost for the XS4000 is remarkable at only $313. We can assume it will get similar efficiency to the smaller XS2000. That data is from a PAR test, so I'll select Usable PPF, and I'll enter the efficiency, 1.96 micromoles per watt. With that data, the calculator estimates the XS4000 will deliver 941 micromoles of usable light to the canopy. That would be enough light to cover 14 and a half square feet with a harvest potential over 25 ounces. The number that pops out here is the cost efficiency. 33 cents per micromole 
is as good of a deal as you will find. And for a fixture with top-end components, it's unbeatable. But these numbers are all based on the 1.96 efficiency that I measured with the XS2000. Because of the efficiencies of scale, I think the XS4000 might do even better than this. It's time to run some tests. I have the Vipar Spectra XS4000 set up in the 5x3 test area. First, I'm running a standard PAR test. I'm using an Apogee SQ500 sensor, which measures the traditional PAR wavelengths from 400 to 700 nanometers. Recent research has shown that far red light from 700 to 750 nanometers is also photosynthetically active. But for decades, research has focused on just the traditional PAR range. For example, the research we rely on regarding maximum photon densities only measured the PAR light. So I continue to use the 1000 micromole per square meter limit for PAR PPFD to set the hanging height. However, if the far red light is contributing to photosynthesis, we should be taking that into account. We just need more research that looks at the density limits in the extended PAR range. We'll come back to EPAR in a minute. First, let's check out this 5x3 PAR map. I'm impressed. This is a big space for a single quantum board style light, and the densities are great from top to bottom and end to end. Let's run the numbers. At a hanging height of 56 centimeters, or 22 inches, the XS4000 delivered a maximum PPFD of 1,000 micromoles per square meter. Across the 15 square foot canopy, the average PPFD is 732.9 micromoles per square meter. That means the XS4000 delivered 989.3 micromoles of usable light to the canopy. The power draw was an even 500 watts, which gives it a photon efficiency of 1.98 micromoles per watt. These are solid numbers. And remember, in this test, we aren't giving any credit for the far red light. But the latest science suggests that the far red light should count. So let me take out the Apogee SQ500 PAR sensor, which measures light from 400 to 700 nanometers, and I'll introduce the new Apogee SQ610 extended PAR sensor. It measures the newly defined EPAR range from 400 to 750 nanometers. I'm going to leave the fixture position the same, and the maximum EPPFD at this height is 1,033 micromoles per square meter. We have long known that far red light is plant biologically active. However, until recently, it was not thought to be significant for photosynthesis. Cutting edge research with advanced LEDs and lasers is improving our understanding of photosynthesis and light. Researchers have been able to test the photosynthetic response more precisely from different wavelengths, and the findings are revolutionary. Far red light clearly contributes to photosynthesis when it's combined with shorter wavelengths. And if the ratio of far red light is less than 30% of the total flux, the photosynthetic contribution from far red photons is equivalent to that of the PAR photons. In the next decade, I think EPAR will replace PAR as the standard measure of photosynthetic light. But we still need a lot more research into EPAR. We're doing some right now. Let's check out this EPAR map. As expected, this is a great EPAR map. Values in the center are now above 1,000 micromoles per square meter, and the measured density is higher in every square in the grid. Let's look back at the traditional PAR map. It's the same distribution of light, and the densities are great. Switching to the EPAR map just bumps everything up, because in this test, we're counting the far red photons. Let's run the numbers. I kept the hanging height at 56 centimeters, or 22 inches. The maximum EPPFD was 1,033 micromoles per square meter, and the average EPPFD across this map is 765.7 micromoles per square meter. That equates to a usable EPPF of 1,033.7 micromoles. With a power draw of 500 watts, the photon efficiency is 2.07 micromoles per watt. These are impressive numbers, especially for such a low cost fixture. If we take these EPAR data and subtract the PAR data, we can evaluate the density and quantity of far red light. There is some sampling error here in each cell, but that should wash out over the 60 samples. The average density of far red light is 32.9 micromoles per square meter. That equates to a usable photon flux of 44.4 .4 micromoles. 
So the far red light accounts for about 4% of the total flux. There are only four diodes dedicated to far red, but they aren't the only source of far red light. The full spectrum 3000K diodes emit a small portion of their energy in the far red wavelengths, and most of this light is coming from them. The data for the 5x3 tests are great. I'm impressed. But 5x3 is not a common grow size. Looking at this EPAR map, it seems like 4x4 coverage could be possible. So I ran a couple 4x4 tests. I started with a PAR test, and although the maximum PPFD was a little under 1,000, at 972 micromoles per square meter, I didn't adjust the hanging height. After the PAR test, I ran the same test again with the EPAR sensor. This test area is one square foot larger than the 5x3 test area. When the test area expands, the photon densities will decrease. That means we could lower the fixture and stay within the limits, but hanging the fixture as low as possible is not always ideal. The XS4000 is only 11 inches wide. If we want it to cover a four foot wide space, we probably shouldn't hang it as low as possible. This height actually seems close to perfect. Let's check out these PAR maps. First, we have the PAR map with the 400 to 700 nanometer light. You can see the high density directly below the fixture, and it stays pretty high all the way to the top and bottom edge. The corners are just below the 500 micromole per square meter threshold, but this is better than I would have predicted. Switching to the EPAR map, the distribution of light looks even better. When we count all of the light from 400 to 750 nanometers, the entire 4x4 canopy is in the prime photosynthetic range. Let's consider the rest of the data. I kept the hanging height for both of these tests at 56 centimeters or 22 inches. The maximum PAR density was 972 micromoles per square meter. In the EPAR range, the maximum density was 1,005 micromoles per square meter. The average density in the PAR map is 682.8 micromoles per square meter. With the inclusion of far red, the average EPAR density is 715.3 micromoles per square meter. So the XS4000 delivered 983.2 micromoles of usable PAR light and a total of 1,030 micromoles of EPAR light to the canopy. With a power draw of 500 watts, the XS4000 had a usable PAR photon efficiency of 1.97 and a usable EPAR photon efficiency of 2.06 micromoles per watt, which is really better than I expected. There are a few more things to consider before I wrap up this review. In the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide, I publish complete test reports for all the fixtures that I test. Here are the main data for the Vipar Spectra XS4000 in the 5x3 EPAR test. Based on these data, we rate it for just about 16 square feet and estimate the harvest potential at almost 28 ounces. Here you can find our discount codes and shopping links. Our Vipar Spectra discount codes are good on Amazon and they will combine with other sales. With discount code Dr. MJ Coco XS, right now on Amazon, the cost will come to only $313. That is a cost efficiency of only 30 cents per micromole. It's unbelievably low for a fixture with Samsung LM301B diodes and Meanwell drivers. Of course, one lucky viewer during the premiere will win the one I tested for free. The LM301B diodes are a big selling point for the XS series. So the winning number is 301. Congrats to whoever guessed the closest number. And if you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can be part of the next one. Below the test data, the EPAR map, and the grow space calculator, you'll find my written review. The Vipar Spectra XS series are nice lights. They use top end components and are very easy to use. The spectrum they produce is excellent, and the XS4000 showed that it can cover 5x3 or 4x4 spaces with great densities of light. After running the tests, I measured the operating temperature. The heat sink hit a maximum temperature of 58.6 degrees Celsius, 137.5 Fahrenheit. The drivers ran somewhat warmer and hit a maximum temperature of 62.8 degrees Celsius, 145 Fahrenheit. These are reasonable temperatures for a 500 watt quantum board. I also tested the dimmer with both the PAR and EPAR sensors. The dimming knob is continuously adjustable with markings at 25, 50, and 75%. The PAR and EPAR wavelengths dim in unison. The values run a little high, but that may be the way that I lined up the dimmer knob. The ratio between power draw and photon densities 
is consistent. I've now tested all of the XS series fixtures. It's a great line, and the XS4000 impressed me. If you have a 5x3 space, this could be a great light for it. There are certainly other options for 4x4 spaces, but not many of them can come close to 30 cents per micromole. Without a doubt, the XS series lights are a great deal. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the growers' interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. You support our work when you use our discount codes to purchase grow lights. I'd like to thank Elaine at Bipar Spectra for sending me the XS4000 to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next PAR test premiere giveaway. Learn about all our grow light giveaways on the deals and discounts page at CocoaForCannabis.com. While you're there, you can read our articles, chat with our community in the chat room, join our next grow challenge, and try your hand at the grow light calculator. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.